Hi. Um, it looks like this is a horrible recording, so um, I'll try to keep it short. Um, my name is Melissa Stanton. My son's name is Law Ken Stanton. I named him because in the Bible, children were named as either a blessing or a curse. And I wanted my son to know how much of a blessing he was, not just to me, but to the world. I named him Law because I was praying that he would honor God's law and man's law better than I have. And Hin is Hebrew for grace. And the definition of grace in Hebrew is quite lengthy and beautiful. And there's an amazing YouTube video that I watched when I was pregnant that just summed it up so amazingly. Maybe I could show it to you sometime. But this isn't about that. I mean, well, it is and it isn't. But my son was legally kidnapped, illegally kidnapped. I mean, I'd say illegally kidnapped because they did a verbal removal order and lied to take my child and have done nothing but lie ever since. This is after I've had human services do three investigations and had to walk away every single time because I am a good mother. I have survived atrocities that most people couldn't even fathom and been able to do so with everything intact for the most part by the grace of God. I wake up every day trying to be the best person I can, not just for myself, for my son, for God, and for the community around me, and have been ignored as I scream from the rooftops how I don't understand how this can happen. I've had two lawyers that have been given to me by the ORPC quit rather than file one motion, rather than make one even attempt to bring my child home. If anything, what they want me to do is to bow down to the demands of human services. And see, here's my thing. If you violate my rights, I will do no bowing. I love my child and I will not teach him that love is the cause of you ever allowing anyone to treat you lesser than you are. I believe that everything we do, our children see. And I believe that my child will see and understand this and it is imperative that I show him who we are as a people, that we are a proud people, and that we are a dignified people, and that we are strong, and that we choose humility and kindness and decency, but that this is a choice, like everyone else's. But I refuse to allow a lesson to my son to be to allow anybody, I don't care if it's the government, to disenfranchise you because they think they are better than you are. That's a lie. I will never lie to my child. I do not lie to my children. I claim every wrong that I've ever done to them being known and unknown, mostly because of my poor decision-making as I was a young lady and foolish but regardless, my children deserve the truth, most definitely from their mother, and I will not lie or cosign anyone hurting my family. And I understand that I might seem a little fiery, but to say the least, I have had to survive so much. And still fight. And here I am, a new, their new fight. Even though all of my life has changed to the better and to do the good things and to fight the good fight, and still someone's trying to make me their vic. But I won't be. I'm asking for help. Because I may not know much about law, but I know enough to know that they're trying to <laughs> rape and pillage my rights and thus in turn my sons. 
and I'm not letting them hurt my baby. I promise God, out of thanks to him for sending him my blessing, my son, that I would do everything in my power to make sure that he was returned to God. And that will not happen if my son is raised in the state's custody. And that will not happen if they break his spirit like they tried to do mine when I was raised in their custody. I am begging for help. I've reached out to Jared Polis and every other legislator, and the only one that ever heard me was Danielle Jarinsky. I have placed my evidence, a good sum of it, on Facebook, including my phone being hacked, by the way. I have been shushed in court reading hearings by the judge. I've been muted during the lynx meetings for the family. I've been told not to worry about the father or what he's doing. And then later, they find weed, fentanyl, and cocaine in his system while he's on felony probation after, mind you, just barely getting felony probation because he killed his number from parole while he was on the charge that he's currently serving. Oh, by the way, he also kidnapped my son, not once, but twice, and the police did nothing. And he took my son to California. Why? Because he's a drug dealer. And his family is essentially a small little, I don't know, organization? I don't know. I mean, they're all ridiculously ignorant and, and truly failures at heart. So, I mean, I guess if you want to call it that, I mean, they're mediocre if they are. But the problem is they're full of narcissists. Narcissism runs in that family like brown eyes doing some. This is a family who passes down not only this mentality, but everything that goes with it. Generation after generation. And unfortunately, I didn't know this at the time, but my son's father, well, at the time I got pregnant, that is, my son's father supplies, at least now he does, the family with drugs. He took my son to California to pick up a drug shipment. And I know this. I can't prove it, but I know it. I need help. I need help with a lawyer that will fight because my son deserves it. Because my son has been being beaten while he was in his custody. And I truly believe that he was molested. And because the whole reason why I changed and became a better person was to protect him from this. And they still, they still. I refuse to be their legal slave. And I refuse for my children to continue to be their legal slave. And no more. My family is not for sale. And I am begging for a lawyer who is willing to fight for us to do so. I can't go to school and try to get decent grades and fight for my son in that way and our future in that way, as well as argue and fuss and fight over seeing him, then see him, deal with the trauma of seeing him and his trauma of seeing me and not being able to come home. of taking hundreds of pounds of his belongings to the human services building, walking, walking, just to have the foster mother refuse to take my son's belongings. Because I would rather provide for my own child than have anybody do it for me. Furthermore, she wasn't able to comb his hair because his father hadn't combed his hair. My baby has pretty hair. All I needed to do was put some darn conditioner in it. And it was almost fixed before he, I left. That's all it was. Some conditioner. The woman decides she was going to take what she felt like. And human services has not, A, returned the items, B, given me the money for them, or C, decided to give me 
confirmation that my baby has his stuff. I don't want no random white woman taking care of my child when I can do it for myself. I don't need nobody shopping for my baby. I provide for him. I have since the day he was born by myself. I go to school. I try to be able to get every piece of education that I can so I can fight for us first and then God willing for more, whatever it may be. Due to this, I've decided I'm going to school for law. Ironic, isn't it, that I name my son law and then I decide to go to school for law, for law? <laughs> but I'm tired of seeing my people pillaged. And I don't just mean people, black people, Creole people, I mean disenfranchised people, people that don't know no better because nobody has taught them, because they haven't thought to fight hard enough, because they haven't been pressed so hard they had to, people that haven't been gifted that I, like God has gifted me in having a big mouth and a refusal to back down. I'm begging for the sake of my son, not for me, to please help me get my baby back home. He's a good child that is loving and intelligent, and he deserves more from the adults around him than he's receiving. I don't care what anybody thinks about me because it's not my job nor my duty to try to play friends. I care about what their duty is to their position of power, influence, and to my child. During this whole thing, I've almost killed myself twice, as strong as I am. I wonder how many parents actually have been. See, That's what I'm praying God will allow to be my niche, is finding those whose lights have been snuffed out by these systems, who are absolutely inhumane and malicious, cruel in their attack of people. to the point where people want to just give up. Shame on them. Because I know if I almost did, many others have. This needs to stop. And I'm sorry, but I'm not the type that can sit and watch something happen and do nothing about it. So, I ask whomever sees this, whomever sees this, to please, in the name of God, help my family. I cannot lose that child to a system who is intentionally dehuman dehumanizing him ignoring his needs, justifying it over their pride and ignorance, and then refusing to even attempt to rectify their wrongs, as I have time and again, even over and over again, in good faith, attempted to get them to do so at the lowest level. Even Jason Crow said that his office doesn't do anything like that. Has anybody got any kind of snuff? Or is it just gonna take a mama that don't know nothing from nothing and is having to teach herself as she goes? Is it gonna take me shaming people to fool the wise? And if so, God, please give me the strength. Give me the strength and the wisdom to do so. 
because it's a lot to take on. It's a lot. Especially having survived what I have even within the last couple of years. Oh, by the way, I found out that I have lupus during this whole thing. And they still have done nothing at all whatsoever to even attempt to meet me halfway. And they're the ones in the wrong. All I've ever asked is, return my baby home to me. Offer the federally mandated services you're supposed to. Tell the truth. And they refuse. They even talked to my lawyer, this last one, before she ever took my case. That is, the assistant district attorney. Yeah, her name is, uh, what is it? Christy Erickson. Yes, Christy Erickson spoke to my lawyer prior to her speaking to me. The judge in baby's court uh, mixed something. She uh, told me she refused to let me speak unless I had a lawyer, even though it's my right. She also said that she was concerned about my mental health. Although I had never spoken to her prior, was not able to finish the sentence that I was trying to speak. And um, was not given the link to the previous court date and was trying to address that with the court. She refused to hear me. The Supreme Court Judicial Branch has told me that I need to gather the evidence to be able to give it to them, even though I've told them all this. All of this will take quite some time and manpower, and I'm just me. I need help. And I'm sending this out to whomever will listen. Because as each organization within this state or within, the, within America chooses to defile the rights that are God given to me and my child, I will wage war with each of them until the day I die. It will be my last dying breath to ensure that not only does my son get justice, but every single person that God sends in my way. I will make it my life's duty to have truth be so very plain that change happens either because of shame, prayer, or that they lose their money. And let's pray all of it. Mostly prayer. I have survived molestation, family beating, incest, rape, homelessness, drug addiction, prison, human trafficking, almost every other atrocity you could think of, domestic violence, the loss of children, the loss of freedom, and here I am, they try and take my son too. But I say no more. You won't take anything that God has given me. And God promised me healing. Part of healing is redemption. Even if that means that I scream out until I'm old and gray and consider crazy. Let it be so. Again calling anybody who's willing to hear me, anyone who's willing to try and actually give a darn. Because if you aren't going to try, do not waste my time because I will see you coming. I'm praying for somebody to step in to this family court and do something so my baby gets back home now. Because they're trying to take it all the way to trial 
and they've wasted all of this time doing nothing, these lawyers, intentionally so, because I've let the ORPC know and I've let the ombudsman know and they have done nothing. I've given them the files of the wrongs that have been done and they've done nothing. And here we are, here we still are. I wanna know why. My son deserves to know why. Why pictures of his legs being bruised up? Why he went from being a happy baby to having sorrow in his eyes that's so very unique. All because they say they found a minor incident of intrafamilial neglect due to injurious environment. Well, I'm sorry. You neglected my son by allowing him with his father, who you knew was under the influence of drugs while on felony probation, and then wanna say that you were surprised when you found additional influences in his system while I was telling you he had it. So who did the real neglect? Who really abused my son? Give me back my baby. And I'm praying that anybody who has the same fire to fight for me that I have right now, please contact me because I will not stop. Not ever. I don't care if I have to stay in school for the rest of my life to find a way to make justice happen. Believe me, I will. This isn't a threat, it's simply a promise. Again, I don't care how crazy I look. Y'all don't pay my bills and you don't own my soul. For those of you that hear me and understand McRae, I ask you to help somehow. If you know somebody, reach out. If you know something, tell me. If you have a story, let me know. Because Arapahoe County in Aurora, Colorado is ridiculously corrupt. Maybe a couple audits will rectify some things. <laughs> I highly doubt it. The level it is, <laughs> let's be honest, the level of corruption is pretty high up there. And I'm gonna keep digging until I see it. I'm gonna root it all out, I promise you that. What don't come out in the wash will come out in the rinse, a good friend tells me. But how about I help it out by putting it on the spin cycle? Again. I reach out begging for help. For those that can understand and respect that plea and what it takes from someone like myself to do so. For people who don't want to, don't worry about it. But know this, get out the way. Get out the way. Because if you ain't part of the solution, you're part of the problem. I'm tired. My lupus is hurting a little bit today. And after being in the hospital, I need some rest. Some will go now. God bless those of you that hear me. And for those that don't, may he bless you still. Because his wisdom is the only thing that will be able to help you. And he will give it to you if you ask. Otherwise, I encourage you to shine your light and stay salty. Take time.